Hi, everybody. So it's Thursday of Holy Week, and wow, what a day this was for Jesus. Uh, he spent a lot of time with his disciples in the upper room. He had this awesome moment where he pulled out a towel and uh, started washing their feet. It was a shocking moment for them. Uh, they had the Passover meal together, and of course, he instituted the Lord's Supper with them that night. But the day ended in a place called the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, we know that Jesus was both fully human and fully God. But I think in the garden that night, we see Jesus in one of his most human moments. He's hours away from the cross, and uh, he responds in a way, actually, that I think every single one of us could relate to. If you look through Mark 14, what you see happening is that Jesus, he, uh, he falls to his knees, not once, not twice, but actually three times, he falls to his knees and cries out to his heavenly father that there would be another way. God, let there be another way, but not my will, but your will be done. He cries out to him over and over and over three times about this. He's desperate before him. Now, this feeling of desperation is something that every single one of us can relate to. Okay, definitely not to the extreme of Jesus who was about to carry the weight of the world's sin. Um, but we have moments where we feel totally desperate. Uh, those moments when we feel like, I, I just don't know that I can go another step. I'm not sure that I can carry this pain. Um, I want this pain to change so much, but it just won't. All of us have those moments where we're just not sure we can take another step forward. And that's that's where Jesus was at that night in the garden. And he shows us what it looks like to have faith, but also to be just vulnerably desperate before God. In verse 33 of Mark 14, it says that he was deeply distressed, that he was troubled. And Jesus says to his disciples there, he just lets them know, uh, he says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow. And then Luke gives us even more detail. He writes that Jesus' sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Now, sweating blood is a, is a rare condition, but it's real. Uh, it's a medical condition called hematidrosis. This is where the blood vessels around your sweat glands become dilated and they uh, eventually rupture and the blood becomes a part of the sweat. Now, the cause of this rare condition is extreme anguish. Jesus our Savior, the Son of God, was in so much anguish as he knelt in the garden that night. There's a lot that we could learn from this. There's been all kinds of books written on it, and I won't begin to try to unpack all of it in just a few minutes. But I would like to share with you a few ways that it encourages me this, this Easter and a few things that it reminds me of. First, it reminds me that God doesn't reject my anguish. He welcomes it. God doesn't reject your anguish. He welcomes it. Now, some of you may have had an earthly father that didn't exactly welcome you in your anguish, that actually pushed against you in times of pain. Let me be clear. Um, that's not your heavenly father. Where your earthly father might have stood with crossed arms and encouraged you to brush it off, your heavenly father stands with open arms. He means it when he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. So if you feel like you're a mess right now and you're in a season of, of kind of being in a mess, know that God welcomes your mess. He does not want you to mask it. And seeing Jesus in the garden and what happened to him that night, it also reminds me that it, when I uh, am willing to bring him my mess and my anguish, it actually swings open the doors for God to strengthen me. After the first time that Jesus prayed, Luke twenty two forty three tells us that an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. Jesus couldn't do this alone. Uh, and, and what did Jesus do with that strength? Did he then just kind of suck it up and smile and say, all right, let's go. I've got strength. No, the scripture tells us that after that moment when the angel came, Jesus then prayed even more earnestly. His heavenly father um, this heavenly strength that his father gave him actually took him to a deeper place of surrender. It's in this place of deep surrender where you and I get to discover something really, really cool. 
we get to discover how God wants to use this, this pain, uh, God's plan for this pain. And this is, this is the third thing it reminds me of. God has a plan for my pain. God has a plan for your pain. He does. It doesn't mean he caused it, but it does mean he wants to use it. He promises that in all things, he works for good for those who love him. Do you love him? He has a plan for your pain. So what's your Gethsemane right now? What is it? God wants to use it. He has a plan for it and plans that you can't even begin to put into words or dream up. I promise. I'm so thankful for the cross. Um, I'd have no hope without it. And neither would you. But I'm also thankful for the journey that Jesus took to the cross. I'm thankful that he stopped in the garden that night and modeled for us what it looks like to be faithful before God, but also to be desperate before him. I'm thankful that he modeled what it looks like to use the strength that God gives us to to actually drive us to a deeper place of surrender. And and I'm thankful that he modeled what it looks like um, to just relentlessly follow God's plan for our life. And ultimately, of course, I'm most thankful for the victory that took place in the garden that night. I'm thankful for those final words that in scriptures, it looks like that, that Jesus practically shouted it at the disciples. He says, get up, let's go. Here comes my betrayer. So I'm praying for you right now. I pray that you experience victory in your Gethsemane this Easter. And I'd love to pray for you right now. Would you join me? And I'm actually going to let you talk to God. Um, why don't you just say to him right now, God, God, I bring to you this anguish I feel right now, this fear that I have and anxiety and nervousness and pain that I feel. God, thank you for receiving me, for not rejecting me. I ask you, God, for that same strength that you gave to Jesus that night in the garden. Strengthen me to surrender more to you, to pray more earnestly and to continue to move forward. Thank you, God, for the plan that you have for me, for the way that you want to use this and you will use this. I trust you, God. I choose right now to follow you with my whole heart. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Hope you have a happy Easter.